Amen. Amen. Okay, so Psalm uh, chapter 92, and let's just have a little look at uh, a few verses there for a second. So Psalm chapter 92, and from verse 12, which reads, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. And the title of my sermon today is Planted in the House of the Lord. Planted in the House of the Lord. I'd also like to go to the Lord in a word of prayer before we get started. So, Father, um, I thank you for this for this great new building that you've given us and thank you for helping us get it all prepared for today um i, I pray that you just help me now to to preach clearly preach loudly boldly preach e exactly what you want me to preach help people to have understanding hearts and ears and and just to want to hear what your word has to say please fill me with your spirit um help me to preach boldly and accurately in jesus name we pray all of this amen. amen okay so we've um we've finally got a long-term church building yeah, we finally got a long-term church building. And when I say finally, look, it, it, it's been a struggle. It's been really hard to find somewhere that's willing to be a church. And I think ultimately God had a plan because, you know, just even getting this prepared and the, and the costs of a lot of the stuff wouldn't have been possible without that building we'd had before. Um, look, so much wouldn't have been possible. We managed to have a place for 18 months nearly, which was amazing. And in fact, more than that from when we first started meeting there and then just to find somewhere, it, it seemed to be getting harder and harder to just find somewhere that would take us um, without, without planning permission. And then to find somewhere, you know, within a couple of weeks of being told we had to be out was just amazing. And the whole thing's been amazing and just been a great kind of, you know, for, for me, just a, a, a great strength builder and faith and uh, strengthener and everything else. And um, it's, it's, it's been a great journey. And look, now we're, we're in a great building. We're in a place which hopefully we can just really make our home now in the long term. And many people probably never thought that we would get this far. Um, that's the truth. There are many people around this country that didn't think we'd get this far. There might even be people in this room that didn't think we'd get this far. People that have been sitting with us before that didn't think we'd get this far. Why did they not think we'd get this far? Well, for a few reasons. Um, and maybe it was. Maybe part of it was a building issue. Just thinking, well, how are you going to get somewhere, brother Ian? How are you going to get somewhere that you could turn into a church? Um, maybe, maybe it was a few other things. Maybe the fact that we stayed open. The fact that we stayed open a year and a half ago when every other church was shutting, maybe people thought no chance. When we started this church, it was in the middle of what, what some would call a pandemic and others would call a pandemic, and others would say was a load of nonsense and others maybe don't think that. But either way, we managed to, to keep going. We managed to keep preaching. Not only did we keep preaching, but pretty much everyone here kept soul winning or the people that were here at the beginning. And we, were, we, were, we had our doors open, we were soul winning, and people I'm sure didn't think that was going to last and they probably thought you're going to get shut down we're going to get shut down but god god didn't let us get shut down did he he yeah. didn't let us get shut down and look there were there were some tests that came with that there were some challenges we kept soul winning we kept preaching we're what they call an nifb church aren't we we're a new independent fundamental baptist church and no that doesn't mean that we're a carbon copy of any other church in fact the closest church we are is is obviously our sending church your foundation baptist church but we still do things slightly differently in some ways we're, an, we're a unique church, but we're, we're part of a unique group of churches as well. And a unique group of churches which, <clears throat> again, people think wouldn't last in a nation like this. How many people thought that we could even have an NIFB church in this nation? I remember a few years back just thinking, anyone comes here to preach, they're just going to get sent home, aren't they? Yeah. And they're not going to be allowed to preach, preach what, what the Word of God commands us to preach. And when you're saying, well, what are you talking about, Brother Ian? Because you're not preaching... YouTube messages on sodomites every week. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that get a church like us shut down. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that people hate and a lot of things which result in a church like this not being able to run. A church which preaches the word of God, basically, the truth. And that's what we preach here, don't we? The truth. Yeah. We preach about the Zionism fraud, Amen. don't we? Yeah, we preach about the Zionism fraud. How many churches in this nation are preaching about the Zionism fraud? How many churches are preaching about these wicked Jews that say they are Jews but are not but are the synagogue of Satan. They're not preaching about it, are they? No. Why are they not preaching about it? Because yeah. they're scared. Yeah. But a lot of people didn't think we'd be able to preach about that, did they? 
And look, we happen to have studied the Book of Romans. And it came up a lot in the Book of Romans, didn't it? Amen. Okay, but that's, that's the way it is, isn't it? And a, a, a church which does still preach the truth about the Sodomite agenda. And look, we preach the truth about that, don't we? Yeah. And we've had, you know, we preach passages like Romans 1 from here. We've had men preach the truth about the Sodomites in the men's preaching nights. And I've preached about the Sodomites many times here behind this pulpit. And we're still going, aren't we? Yeah. yeah, we're still going, but people probably didn't think we would still be running. They thought, oh, you'd be getting banged up already. You'd be in, you'd be in prison. Maybe some, sadly, were hoping that. But no, we're, we're still preaching about the perversion in this nation, the perversion absolutely everywhere. And we preach about that, haven't we? Yeah, in this church, we, you've come here, you've sat here, you're a part of a church which preaches about all the wickedness that goes on here, about the false vaccine science. Again... How many churches are preaching about that? Yeah. Preaching about that live on YouTube and look, okay, maybe, oh, well, you're such a small channel, brother, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, we still preach it, aren't we? That's right. And people didn't yeah. think we'd be preaching it. And we're preaching about the wickedness out there, all these lies out there, all these, all, all these money-making shams out there. What about the baby murder industry? Right. Again, did people think we'd be able to preach about that for a year and a half? Preach sermons dedicated to that, preach parts of sermons on that, about the amount of babies getting murdered, but we're still here, aren't we? Yeah. We're still here, and we now have a permanent building, and we're still here. Amen. What about false religions? Many people say that one of the reasons Pastor Stephen Anderson's banned from here, it seems, is his stance on Islam, on that wicked, wicked, vile, false religion called Islam. Yeah. But we preach about that here, don't we? Yeah. And no one's getting sent away from here yet. And I haven't been arrested yet because I'm preaching the word of God. Because it's the word of God and it's the truth. And it's the truth that that is a wicked false religion. A wicked false religion who, whose major number one prophet is an open paedophile. And we'll preach that from this pulpit and we'll preach the truth, won't we? And we're still preaching it. And that means that we have had and will continue to have opposition. We're going to continue to have opposition in this church, aren't we? Okay, and we've had opposition such as from the beginning, and some of it is becoming a bit of a distant memory, but we did have the COVID police out, if you could call them that. Yeah. I don't really know what they were, but we had, on our first service, we, have, we had them out. We had real police, not plastic police, but we had real police out when we were soul winning. And, and they came out a couple of times. A couple of people have had issues with the police. I had them called on me for daring to try and preach the gospel with my family to two teenage girls when I had children with me, but apparently that's, that's wicked. We've had council representatives try and contact, trying to get involved, trying to, trying to t tell us we have to prove this and show that. We're still here, aren't we? Yeah. We've had the local media on us. That was quite fun. The local media doing a piece of this just as we were becoming a church. And, and again, the criticism for going out and so on, because that's the truth, isn't it? Is the rest of it, the rest of it is, look, they use it as a reason. But what do they really hate? It's the soul winning. Yeah. Yeah. What do they really hate? It's the soul winning church. Yeah, they'll blame it on the Sodomites. Yeah, they'll blame it on the Jews. Yeah, they'll blame it on, uh, preach the truth about Islam. They'll blame it on COVID. But the truth is, it's soul winning, isn't it? Yeah. It's soul winning. But we're still preaching. We're still going out and preaching the gospel. We've had local media. We've had fly tippers. Do you remember the, the fly tipping debacle in our old building? guy would just and again it was someone that had access to the building it was just dumping piles of rubbish in our car park but we're still here aren't we yeah. and we still got in and we still ended up so we had people trying to that just reminded me, we had someone like blocking our gate once didn't we on a sunday just parked across our gate for the day but that car got moved didn't it one way or another we've had we've had stalkers we've had online stalkers not many but we've had a few we've had We've had infiltrators come into the church. We've had various weirdos. And am I right in thinking that we had a Catholic priest here last week? Was he definitely a Catholic priest? Can anyone vouch for that? He was actually a priest, yeah? A minister in a Catholic church came here and then while I was talking to someone else, started telling everyone that we need to be more ecumenical, apparently. And just for the record, he is banned, all right? So, ushers, please, don't ever let this guy back in. But we've had a, we've had a few funny ones in here, haven't we, over the time? And look, all of that will increase, yeah? And it will get worse. And we are going to get more and more of this sort of stuff. So how, in fact, have we actually got this far? 
because we have had some weirdos, haven't we? We've had some opposition. We haven't had, it hasn't been crazy yet, and it's going to probably get worse, isn't it? Because that's the nature of this thing. Well, first off, it's because, it's because God built our church. Amen. Yeah? God built this church, didn't he? Yeah, it's not, it's not about me. It's not about Pastor Thompson. It's not about everyone in here. Ultimately, it's God that built our yeah, church. Yeah. yeah, God's building our church. He's continued to build it. You don't have to turn a bit in Matthew 16, 18. The Lord Jesus Christ said, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And God's built his church. And that does mean that the opposition will increase. Okay, so if you're thinking, well, you, you know, maybe some people sitting here thinking, oh, I hope we don't get anything else. We are going to get some more stuff come, yeah. happen, yeah? Okay, we're going to get stuff from the inside, we're going to get stuff from the outside. We're going to get all sorts of things will come up and, and, and try and destabilize us and try and destroy us. But God's building our church, isn't he? Yeah, God's given us a new building. God's planted us in Wickford. But... There are also, there are also many of God's people here, yeah, and God uses his people that have helped keep this ship sailing. Okay, many people here, and look, everyone who's just been turning up to church to some degree has kept this ship sailing. If I was turning up here and there's no one here, maybe, maybe this, this church wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have turned up myself after a little while. But look, look, everyone here has done that, but there have been some, some people as well, and, and look, you know, this is for me, this is a momentous day, okay? This is a momentous day. And for many, it might not be. They come in, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. We've got a new building. A bit annoying that we're not across the road from Sainsbury's anymore. And it's a bit, and we've got to walk an extra five, ten minutes, yeah? Some, they might be thinking, yeah, at least I've got to drive a bit less time, yeah? It's a bit, a bit less of a drive. Some people are probably just neither, neither or. It's just like, yeah, cool, okay, let's crack on. Yeah, but for me, this is a massive day, okay? Because I, through blood, sweat, and tears, I've tried to find a building for 18 months, and we finally, I'm finally preach out of a new building okay and to finally have a new building and feel like we finally have a home to be able to plan around this to be able to plan around hopefully people getting planted in this church it's been monumental so on that on that there, there is someone that, that i haven't made a point to thank you before because she doesn't like me talking about it in public but my wife has been such a great help with all of this she's been absolutely amazing she's going red already now and staring at the ground because that's what she does but look this, this i couldn't have done this without her the support the prayers the help all the stuff she does behind the scenes basically being a single mum for a lot of the time that she's here is and and half the week and in fact the last few weeks especially uh, i've nearly forgotten my kids names <laughs> <laughs> and i did forget my wife's name a couple of times okay so look it, it's and and it's not just it's not just in the build-up to this it's been over the last 18 months and the great support but also my children as well and my my eldest children especially the amount of hard work they've put in i mean they were here till borderline midnight last night just sweeping and cleaning and helping and tidying and look, there's been there's been a lot lot of support but there's also it's not just my family and my family have done a lot to help this happen and they've put in a lot of work but there, there's a lot of people around here who have just been just been a great support a great support with with whether it's kind words whether it's just just supportive just being good church members just people that have just wanted to muck in, want to help out, want to do stuff, want to just be a help, no, no ulterior motives, just getting stuck in, just, just, just even if it's just the pleasant faces. So some people look, they live far, some people aren't able to necessarily help so much hands on, but even if it's just looking around and seeing friendly faces when you're preaching, seeing people that just want to hear, seeing people that aren't mumbling, muttering under their breath, people that just aren't complaining, the rest of it, people that just cause you no trouble. Okay, and that, it's been great. And look, so many people here have been a great help to having this church running as it is and to get to this point. Like I said, this is a momentous occasion for me to be here. And look, thank you for everyone here. Thank you for everyone that's, that's coming. Thank you for everyone. You know how much you've helped. You know if you have or haven't. You know if you've, you've been praying for us. Every single bit just really helps. And I hope you are. I hope that you are supporting. I hope everyone here wants to support because this is a big deal. Okay, this church is a big deal. We're now a big deal in Wickford. Okay, we're a big deal in the UK. Amen. Yeah, if, if, if you're wondering, are we a big deal in the UK? Yeah, we're a big deal in the UK. And it's not because I'm a big deal, because people go, oh, brother Ian, lift himself up. No, it's just because we're one of the few churches preaching the truth. Okay, because we're one of the few churches going out soul winning. We have people coming from all over the country. We had someone come last week just to get baptised from up in Leeds, just to get baptised. We had people visit from Inverness. We've had people visit from Holland. We've had people visit from Switzerland. We've had people visit from, from Poland. We've had people visit 
from over Europe to come to this nation. We've got more still wanting to come and visit. Probably some of them didn't think we'd still be here. And now we are. They want to come here. This is a big deal. Okay. And where it's a big deal, it means it needs your support. Yeah. It needs every single person's support here in this church. And I thank you for everyone that has. Because it is a relief, isn't it? It's a relief to have a church here that even goes soul winning. Yeah. Isn't it? That even just goes soul winning. Yeah. A church which if you try and go soul winning, you don't start getting frowns and, and little digs and little comments from the pastor at the church for daring to even want to go soul winning. Yeah? yeah? It's a great thing, isn't it? Yeah. Great thing yeah. to have a church like that. A church that actually believes the gospel. How about that? Yeah. A church that believes what is said in black and white in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a church that believes the gospel. Isn't that nice to have? Yes. Because, yeah, I believe the gospel. Yeah. yeah? And, and I will tell you time and time again, if I ever said I didn't believe the gospel, then you'd have every right to just walk out of here as fast as you could. But I believe the gospel. And I'll make it clear. And I'll never start saying one thing out of one side of my mouth and then start whispering, repent of your sins out the other side. And how many churches do that? You can't even believe them when they say they believe the gospel. Because deep down they don't. But, yeah, we believe the gospel here. And I hope everyone here believes the gospel. We believe the Bible. Isn't it nice to have a church that believes the Bible? Amen. Not just believes bits and pieces, but believes the whole word of God. Yeah. And I believe every word of God. And I hope everyone here believes every word of God. And is it a relief to have? And is it something to be appreciated? Yes. Something to say, I'm at a church which preaches the Bible, which preaches the heart. Look, yeah, you might not like my preaching. You might maybe not like the way I... I there might be things I say a bit, bit weird. There might be things, you know, little catchphrases I have, little fillers and the rest of it that every preacher has. When you sit and t listen to someone for three hours a week plus, you're going to sometimes find things that you're going to be a bit, oh, he's, you know, that's his little in, in filler word or something else. But is it just nice to just hear the word of God preached? Is it nice to hear the gospel and not wonder when's the repent of your sins going to come out or any of the rest of it? Look, it's just, look, it's great just to have a church, isn't it? And do you know what makes, what, what, what that makes this place. Do you know what that makes this place? To have a place which has the word of God, which preaches the gospel, which, which sends you out soul winning, which believes the Bible. That makes this the house of the Lord, doesn't it? Yeah. The house of the Lord or the house of God. You're in the house of God right now. And I would hazard a guess and say there's very few houses of the Lord left in this nation and you're sitting in one of the remaining ones. Okay, yeah. you're sitting in there and I don't think there's another one on fire like this church is. I don't see any other church in this nation where that many people are going out week in, week out soul winning. You are in the ultimate house of the Lord in the UK. Okay, and you're sitting in there in some industrial building in Whitford. And it's the house of God. It's the house of the Lord. Yeah, it doesn't have pretty pictures of graven images there. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have people wearing dresses, wandering around and young boys dressed as women singing like girls. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have any of that. But it's the house of God, because you're coming to the house of the Lord, not the house of Baal, aren't you? Yeah? Amen. And isn't that a great thing, to come to the house of the Lord? But it's one thing being here. Yeah, you come here. Good on you. You made the trip. You made the journey. For some of you, it's a big journey. It's another thing to be planted in the house of the Lord. Okay, you want to be planted in the house of the Lord, don't you? Well, that's what the psalmist said. Psalm 92 and verse 13, it said, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Mm -hmm. So how do we get planted? How do we get planted? Well, think of yourself like a, like a young tree or a plant or a bush or something like that. When it's time to plant that tree, there are certain criteria for successful planting, aren't there? Yeah, there's certain criteria. You can't just grab something and just shove it any which way you can. A lot of the time, it's not gonna, it's not gonna take, is it? There's certain criteria, and when it comes to us, we want to be successfully planted. So, to be successfully planted in the house of the Lord, number one, you need the right conditions. Okay, you need the right conditions. If you take certain plants and put them in the wrong soil, they won't survive. You know that, yeah? Okay, I'm giving you a little lesson here on horticulture, and I'm no expert on horticulture, but I know a little. If you put them in the wrong temperature. Yeah. yeah, they won't necessarily survive. No. Yeah, you put them in the wrong amount of sunlight, they won't survive. Yeah, and sometimes it can be a bit of trial and error with things. You think you have killed another one. Oh, why is this one not taking? And sometimes that's what happens. You need to be in the right conditions. You need to be planted in the right conditions, and that's the same with us. We need to be planted in the right place, don't we? Psalm ninety-two. Look at verse one here. 
It's a psalm or song for the Sabbath day. And no, this is not a Sabbath day. The Sabbath has, has been fulfilled. But this is the first day of the week. And that's when we worship. And this is quite fitting, I think, here, because that's when they worship was on the Sabbath day. Yeah. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. So that's why we, we thank God here in prayer, isn't it? Yeah, it's not just in song. It's also in prayer as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and we want to thank God. We want to praise God. We want to give thanks unto the Lord. But that's why we sing to the Lord as well. And you know, the indwelling Holy Spirit inside you wants that. The flesh doesn't always want that. The flesh might want the rock music. The flesh might not want to be praying. The flesh might want to be doing other things. The flesh might want to be planning what you're doing tomorrow, what you're eating for dinner tonight, when the prayers are going on, but the spirit wants to pray. Yeah. It's the yeah. spirit that wants to pray. The spirit wants to sing fitting praise unto the Lord, yeah? Verse two says, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. So those conditions need to be consistent, don't they? When you plant, when you plant something, the conditions need to be consistent. It's no good, well, I've got, I've got a plant that needs really hot temperatures, so, well, it's a hot day today. It's gonna to be fine, because as soon as it gets cold at night, I mean, you put, a, you put a young plant out and it starts getting the frost, that's the end of those plants. I mean, that yeah. can be frustrating, can't it? Waiting for that last frost, especially in the UK, where the weather changes every, you know, every year, you don't know, okay, April's gonna be safe to put out those young vegetable plants, and then they all die, because we had a sudden frost. You can get a frost in May, can't you? In the UK, you've got to keep an eye on the weather forecast because you've got to start covering things, bringing them in, etc. Well, they need, with us as well, those conditions need to be consistent, don't they? Yeah, we need to consistently praise the Lord here. We need to consistently sing fitting praises to the Lord for us to be planted properly in the house of God, right? For the Holy Spirit to be comfortable and happy being planted in the house of the Lord. Verse 3 says, upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery upon the harp with a solemn sound not upon the drums with the rock music is it Amen. okay not upon the drums not upon the electric guitar and all this and, and it's amazing how they palmed that off to most of the world to think that that's actually a nice sound isn't it I mean it's amazing isn't it it's it, that's, that's quite a good sham but no it's not on any of that is it it's upon instruments of 10 strings uh, the 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 psaltery the heart it's a solemn sound isn't it a solemn sound it's not some sort of discotheque we're not in a discotheque here in case you were wondering because sometimes they convert industrial units into discotheques, yeah? But we're not doing that here, are we? This isn't some sort of squat party. This is, I know it's a bit rough around the edges still. We're not finished yet, okay? But it's not a squat party here, right? It's not some sort of rave, yeah? No, we're in the house of the Lord. And the house of the Lord, he wants us to, to, to show forth his loving kindness in the morning, his faithfulness every night, upon an instrument of ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp of the solemn sound. That's why the words of the hymns are important. Yeah, that's why you want to be planted properly. You need to make sure you're in a house of God which has proper doctrine in the hymns. Yeah, yeah that's showing forth that his loving kindness, his faithfulness every night. That's morning and night, by the way, isn't it? Yeah, notice that? They didn't just turn up on the Sabbath day. Yeah, tick the box and then that was the end of it. Yeah, that was morning and night. Romans 12, 2, you don't have to turn, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Why would a church want to be conformed to this wicked world? Yeah. Why would a church want to be conformed? Why would they? Why would they want to sit there and go, we need to be a bit more like the world. We need to get a bit more worldly music going because people will like that more. That's, it's, it is wicked, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. But how many of them are like that? Yeah. But here's the thing, yeah. If you're planted in the house of the Lord and you want to be planted there, do you think you should be going home and listening to that junk? No. Do you think it's just when you're in the church? Well, when you're in church, you listen to the hymns. When you're in church, the doctrine's strong in the hymns. The hymns are nice. It's a solemn sound and everything else. But when you get home, when you're in the car on the way home, now it's time for the rock music. Now it's time for the worldly music. Do you think that's going to help you get planted in the house of the Lord? No. How hard is that going to be to be planted here? If you're just constantly feeding the flesh with the junk, feeding the flesh with the trash, feeding the flesh with the, with the MTV, then, and let's be honest, most pretty much all Christian rock, all that crock of you know what, all that Christian rap, all that crap, all of that rubbish, you're feeding your flesh with that, 
Do you think you're going to be happily planted in the house of the Lord when it's, when it's, when it's the hymns? When it's clear doctrine? When it's just nice, nice reverent praise of the Lord and worship of the Lord? No, you need to cut that out of your life, don't you? You need to cut that out. You want to be planted properly. So at the end of the day, basically what you're doing, you're being planted here and then you're just heaping on top of that plant piles of filthy, no good soil. That's what you're doing. You're, you're just heaping just the worst grade soil on top and wondering why that plant isn't flourishing, why that tree isn't growing. Oh, but, but, I've been, but I'm in the right soil once a week, once a week, but the rest of the time it's just junk, it's rubbish. You're just filling it up with that cheap stuff that you got from the guy down, at, down in the field, someone that said, oh, worry, I've got some good soil for you. Yeah, sure, it's good soil, you know. I remember I used to do uh, landscape sometimes and the cheapest stuff you could get for topsoil. We used to get this stuff, oh, don't worry, screen soil. It was like 20 pound a metre. And a cubic metre is a lot, okay? You're talking about a couple of tonnes of soil here for 20 quid. When they'll charge, you know, they would have charged for the loam topsoil, 75 pound a tonne. So you get this stuff and you'd, you'd get it on the back of your truck and you'd tip it off and you'd be putting it out and you'd just... You know, you, and really, like, grass grows on anything, okay? So th some of the topsoil is a bit of a sham when it comes to grass anyway, okay? But you're raking this stuff out, and it's got bits of bark and plastic and just everything but soil in it. And you're trying to drag this stuff level, you're screening it level, and you're thinking, if my customer, come out, my customer comes out here, I'm going to have to explain to them, look, it doesn't matter, yeah? It really doesn't matter. Because people are thinking it should be like powder, you know, and it should just fall through the hands and everything else. But you can get some real rubbish. Did you know that? You can get some real rubbish soil. And that's what you're doing. When you're coming to the house of the Lord, when you're coming to, to plant yourself in the house of the Lord, and then you're just going home and listening to all that worldly music, you're just getting that cheap rubbish soil. And some plants need good soil, okay? Not all plants are like nice turf cut and, and already got the soil underneath it and you just put it on top of something else for the roots to go down into. No, we all need some, we all need some, some good soil, don't we? Yeah, we need some good surroundings. Okay, he said, uh, he said here in verse 4, For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work, I will triumph in the works of thy hands. The right conditions for a believer is a place that triumphs in the works of God's hands, yeah? But that is all the works, yeah? So we triumph in the works of God's hands when we're behind this pulpit, when we're singing hymns, when we're praying, when we're chatting, when we're going out soul winning, when we're coming back from soul winning. But they're all the works of God's hands, aren't they? Yeah, so for the right conditions to be planted in the right place, in the right conditions, we need to make sure in a church like this that we continue to, to triumph in all the works of God's hands, such as his death on the cross paying for all our sins, yeah? Every single one of our sins. That's a triumph, isn't it? That's a triumph for the works of God's hands, such as his creation. That's why we don't want anyone here going around whispering about gap theories, yeah, or, or you know, or, or millions and billions of years, and, well, it's just some sort of, it's more of a, just a general story that's, no, we believe in a literal six-day creation, don't we? Amen. Yeah, and, and we believe in a young earth, don't we? We might believe in what was made an old earth, but it was a young earth, yeah? It was only here 6,000 odd years ago, because that's what the Word of God says. And we believe that here, and we're not going to be whispering anything else around this church, are we? And we'll be catching people out that do. But we believe in that, and because we triumph in the works of God's hands. His righteous judgments we triumph in as well, don't we? Yeah, all the righteous judgments, and that includes every single word of the Old Testament we triumph in, don't we? Yeah, there are bits that don't apply to us. Yeah, the meats, drinks, and diverse washings and carnal ordinances don't apply to us. But there's nothing wrong with them, are there? And we triumph in the works of God's hands. We definitely triumph in, in his moral law, don't we? Yeah, we triumph. We're not embarrassed about that, are we? And, we, and our, the Holy Spirit inside you wants to be in surroundings which agree with the Holy Spirit, right? And that comes from the word of God. We triumph in the works of God's hands such as Sodom and Gomorrah, don't we? Yeah, that was a work of God's hands, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it not God that rained down fire and brimstone on those wicked perverts? Yeah. We triumph in that, don't we? Yeah. We triumph in God's judgment. That was a just judgment of God, wasn't it? On a wicked place, and we're not embarrassed about that, are we? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, some of that stuff is Old Testament. No, no, I hope no one here says that. I hope no one here comes out with that sort of rubbish when they're in the wrong sort of company. The company that they're a bit embarrassed. Look, you don't have to go and start spouting off to everyone. And, hi, pleased to meet you. I'm, I'm Ian. Let me tell you about Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> 
But when it comes up in conversation, I hope you triumph in the work of God's hands, yeah? Because yeah. it's not just me, it's the surroundings of the church, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? Those roots go far with a plant, don't they? You want to be planted, those roots go far, and it's about the surroundings as well. It's about the people in the church as well. He said in verse 5, O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Because the right conditions aren't ashamed of his works, are they? They're not ashamed of his works. But that soil is deep too, isn't it? Yeah, you need some deep soil. You need some deep, good quality soil if you're going to be planted properly. And that's why we do Bible studies here as well. That's why it's not always, you know, just motivational sermons. But that's why you need to be here for the Bible studies as well. Yeah. Okay, because it's one thing turning up on a Sunday morning and hearing on a Sunday morning, maybe it's more of a kind of general, you know, what, what some might call a topical sermon. And it's preaching, encouragement, things like that. Sometimes it's discouragement, but, you know, it's all part and parcel of it, yeah? But you need to be coming to Bible studies as well, yeah? You need to be hearing the deeper things of the Word of God. His thoughts are very deep. And look, the more we go through verse by verse, how deep are the thoughts of the, uh, of the Lord, eh? They're so deep, and when you dwell on those verses, you see how deep they are. And wow, we, we've just been going through, through the Gospel of Matthew, and there's some, some layers you can just keep unpeeling and unpeeling, can't you? And look, and I, I can't do it justice myself, but look, you need to be here and at least go through those verses, verse by verse. Because planting can have challenges, can't it? Okay, planting can have challenges. Turn to Mark chapter 4. Young trees need protection, by the way. Yeah, young trees need protection. Parents, don't forget that. But don't forget that with new believers as well. You put, a, you put some young tree out there and the wind's battering it and the rain's battering it and the sun's battering it. A lot of them, they won't survive. Yeah, they need protection. We need to make sure that we protect the new people in this church, that we're kind to them, that we're loving to them, that we're kind and loving to the children in this church as well. Older trees, how about older trees, can be really hard to successfully transplant, can't they? Ever tried that before? Ever tried putting an older tree in a pot into something new? And a lot of the time it's pot bound, isn't it? Those roots are just so, just in, they won't go any further. Sometimes you're trying to peel those roots away. And that could be what it's like having someone who's been in bad churches for a long time coming into a church like this. Someone that's set in their old ways. Someone that's been in some sort of old bad churches. Coming to a church like this can be hard for them, can't it? It can be hard and it can be hard to release those roots and get them to spread and get them to start being a healthy plant again. Yeah. But again, we, we need to try and do that. We need to be patient with people, don't we? Yeah. We need to be loving to people. We need to be calm with people. We need to not obviously just someone news come in. They, they've been at some bad... They must, be a, they must be some sort of reprobate because they're, they're spouting, you know, they don't sound exactly like we sound, yeah? And we ought to be careful of that sometimes. Sometimes you want someone to go, you know, exactly how we preach the gospel to show their saving. It's not always like that, is it? Okay? But, yeah, we need to... We need to we need to look out for those challenges. And like I said, we all have a responsibility here to keep the conditions right, okay? Everyone here, it's everyone's responsibility. Plants need nutrient-rich soil. And our plants need nutrient-rich soil with full sun, yeah? We need full sun, full nutrient. We need the best soil. That's the sort of plant we are. What happens if the conditions are wrong? You turn to Mark chapter 4, didn't you? Look at verse 1. And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and it yielded fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him, with the twelve, asked of him the parable. So he's told them this parable. Yeah, he's told them this parable, and praise God, we have we have the explanation to the parable here. And in fact, we have the explanation to the parable in three different Gospels, 
So we can really compare as well and really get to the bottom of this parable. But we were just reading Mark 4 here and he says here in verse 11, And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be, they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know you not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they... These are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. If the conditions are wrong, and the roots won't grow like the seed here on stony ground, then... It says here, when they've heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness, but they have no root in themselves, they endure for time, and then when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. We want to make sure the conditions are right here, for the roots to grow, for the roots to flourish, so when the persecution and affliction comes in all of your lives, which it will if you're serving God, and you're living righteously, and you're doing things for God, you will suffer persecution, you will have affliction, but if your roots are spread, your roots are healthy, you're healthily planted, then you're less likely to be offended. You're less likely to fall away in that time. You're less likely to drop out of church. So to be successfully planted in the house of the Lord, number one, you need the right conditions. Number two, you need to remove the weeds. Okay, number two, you need to remove the weeds because the right conditions attract weeds too and there are many different types of weeds. So you're in Mark 4, we're going to look there because for starters, there are the thorns, aren't there? The thorns. He says here, Mark 4, verse 18, And these are they which are sown among th thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And of course you don't want to be planted among thorns to start with, do you? Okay, and that would happen if you got saved, you went to church, and you just went to some wicked worldly church. Mm -hmm. Some wicked, just full of worldly people, full of unsaved, full of worldly Christians, full of all sorts of... Of different types of thorns just choking the word encouraging covetousness encouraging the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh all that sort of stuff you wouldn't you, you don't want to be there do you because you're going to get choked straight away and then you're going to become unfruitful but thorns just seem to keep coming back have you noticed that yeah. you ever dug up brambles in your garden try and cut look, even digging them up is hard enough a lot of the time isn't it but you cut them as low as you can you think you've got the whole thing out and they just come back, don't they? And they come back and come back. And you have to remember that. And that's one of the reasons why a church like this has to keep preaching on those thorns, yeah. on those deceitfulness of riches, on those lusts of the flesh and the lusts of the eyes. That's why you're going to hear it preached time and time again. That's why you're going to sit here thinking, oh, he's, you know, where, where's the love? Where's the love? He's preaching on, yeah, that's, that's the love. Yeah. He's preaching on sin is getting the, the sin out of your lives because otherwise you're going to get choked and you don't want to get choked getting choked isn't very fun is it where was brother john is he is he out here brother john here was i think he did some bjj tournament didn't he i'm sure some people tried to choke him yesterday and i bet it wasn't very fun that part of it well kind of it's fun when you get out of the choke but it's not nice getting choked is it okay and you don't want to be getting choked by these things and it can feel like you're choking when you're surrounded by all this sin and you feel like you're losing that battle with sin, it can feel like you're just being choked, yeah. being choked by these wicked things around. And there are so many of them, aren't there? There are so many of them. And you don't want them there in the first place. So you need them preaching out. But you also have to take responsibility too, don't you? Okay, everyone here, look, I can preach behind this pulpit, okay, and... That's kind of as, as far as it's going to go. I can help you out if you come to me for help. Okay? And other people can help you out. But look, you need to take responsibility at home. You need to set things in your life. Whatever it is, what your issues are. And everyone here is going to have individual problems and issues and temptations. Those thorns will keep growing back. And you've got to keep chopping them down. You've got to hack them down. You've got to cut them away. And you've got to make sure you, you do it with a sharp tool as well. Yeah? 
the sharpest tool, the Word of God. Amen. But you can't, you, you've got to keep doing it. You can't, well, I've got rid of that thing now. I'm all right now. I've got rid of the booze. Yeah. I had a problem with booze, but I got rid of the booze. Now I'm all right to go and hang around with my unsafe friends in the pub. Do you think you're all right to hang around with your unsafe friends in the pub? No. no. I got, I, I'm all right. Yeah, I got rid of the booze, but you know, well, I'm just, you know, they're drinking. They're not safe, so it's all right. Do you think that's all right? No. Do you think that that's, that might not creep up on you? Well, I got rid of the marijuana. Maybe it was the marijuana. I got rid of smoking weed. Yeah, I got rid of that. I don't do that anymore. But, you know, it's all right to just go and see those people, isn't it? Because I might get a chance to preach the gospel to them. Well, they're kind of sitting there spaced out going, yeah, man, sounds great. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> because really, you're not going to really do much pre... You're not going to get much, much saving going on there, are you? Okay, but whatever your issue is, may, maybe, maybe you had an issue with porn. Yeah, because a lot of people have an issue with porn. I preached about this before. May, and, and I'm going to be careful I'm scanning here. I'm not trying to focus on anyone. Right? Because uh, I, I hope no one did. But the, the chance on a room like this, there might be people that have. And if you have had that issue, you need to set some limits, especially on your online surf. You need to make sure, you need to get off pretty much all social media. I'll be honest with you. Okay, because if you've had a problem like that, you're going to have all that stuff in your face. Look, let's be honest, the way just any women dress nowadays is, is was pornography not many years ago you can't be staring at that stuff if you've had a problem with that you need to cut that out of your life and look we could go through a list of common sins that you need to make sure you distance yourself from okay you need to make sure that you keep those thorns away you cut those thorns down any which way you can okay go back to psalm 92 because there are other types of weeds too there are other types of weeds Verse 5 in Psalm 92 says, O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. These are not only unbelievers, but the wicked. This is the devil's children. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the works of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. When grass goes to seed, it gets everywhere. Have you noticed that? Yeah. When it go, you just get grass growing up all over the place. It's, sometimes it seems like it doesn't even need soil. It just needs like a tiny little layer of dirt and suddenly you've got grass growing up. It gets everywhere. And so do the wicked. Okay, even the house of the Lord, and I'm not going to go off on one with that, but I'll, I'll, I'll regularly warn you about that because people just seem to forget that. Even the house of the Lord. Now, these sorts of weeds will destroy you. Okay, they will destroy you. That's what their goal is. They'll take the nutrients. Okay, they'll take away your nutrients. They'll attract the bugs as well. You notice that with weeds, they just always see there are loads of bugs around them. And then the bugs start getting on the plant. They take away the nutrients of the plants. They shade the plants. Sometimes they even wrap around the plants. They do many, many different things. And look, we need to keep the weeds out of our life. The ivy will literally suck the life out of you, won't it? Yeah, you see an ivy when it's destroyed a tree, just, just terrible, is it? You look at the tree, it's so green. No, it's the ivy. The ivy's green, the tree's dead. Yeah, because it will. They, will. they will surround you, they'll choke you, they'll suck the life out of you. But they're everywhere. They do spring as the grass, they flourish. It, it says here, the workers of iniquity do flourish and they need regular removal from your life. Okay, and that includes outside the church. You want to be planted in the house of the Lord? You need to make sure that you're removing these sorts of people from your life. Okay, we're not talking about the unsaved, we're talking about the wicked. We're talking about the workers of iniquity, we're talking about reprobates. You need to remove them. How do you remove them from your life? Well, you need to recognise them first. And when you recognise them, you get rid of them. Okay, and look, there are many areas of life where Christians sitting in a church like this will then go home and go, well, you know, but it's cousin whoever. They're all right, they're harmless, even though they're a flaming sodomite. Yeah, or it's, you know, well, it's just a teacher at my kid's school, but they're some vile reprobate. Or, well, it's just some, you know, I, you know, they're a family member. Yeah, they go around preaching a false gospel, but I just think they're unsaved. They're still savable. I'll just debate with them week after week, month after month, yeah? Look, people are going and preaching false gospels. They're going out and bringing a false gospel to you. Look, the Bible says what those types of people are, yeah? Let them be accursed. Let them be a curse. And we have to make, we have to draw lines in our life, don't we? Yeah, amen. Okay, these types of people, you have to draw those lines. 
Turn to Psalm, do you turn to Psalm 101? Turn to Psalm 101. David's talking about these types of people in Psalm 101, 101. It's a Psalm of David. And from verse 1, Psalm 101 verse 1 reads, I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Now, many go to this verse to, as a good example about not watching TV, don't they? Yeah? They say, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Yeah? And that is a wicked thing, isn't it? There's very little you'll find on the television that isn't wicked. Okay? If you're sitting there just staring at all sorts, no, I would say 90% of what you're looking at is wicked. Okay, so I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Now that would, for me, include a lot of social media. That would include a lot of, a lot of internet watching is wickedness. Let's be honest. A lot of stuff that people then eventually start going towards, they go down these YouTube rabbit trails, and next thing you know, they're, car they're setting wickedness before their eyes. Okay, now that's true, isn't it? But here's the thing with that. He says, I hate the work of them that turn aside, it shall not cleave to me. Then he says, a froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. You want to be planted in the house of the Lord, yeah? But you know more about some sort of vile reprobate who's all over TV, some celebrity sodomite. You know more about them a lot of the time than you know about Jesus Christ, don't you? There are people here, I'm sure, that know more about some wicked, vile reprobate out there than they do about Jesus Christ. That, that know everything about them, what they do, where they eat, where they go, who, they, who they're with and everything else. And, and they're wicked people, aren't they? All these people in the public eye, the vast majority are wicked people, aren't they? And, and yet, how many people are still following their lives, still care about who it is they're dating? who it is they know, who it is that they're, you know, that they're hanging around with, who it is that they fell out with recently. And all this stuff, and that doesn't have to be on the TV, does it? I could just be reading about these people. How about read the Word of God, eh? How about read stuff which actually has any substance? Because we don't want to know a wicked person, do we? I will not know a wicked person. And that includes what comes through your TV. So you could sit there and go, well, yeah, but, you know, I'm going to, I'm, it's not that bad. It's not that, and you're just watching all these reprobates and sodomites playing some sort of, you know, some sort of game of acting where they're doing all sorts of wicked stuff. It's all sort of blood and gore and filth and innuendo and smut and the rest of it. Oh, well, yeah, it's not that bad, is it? No, it's bad. Yeah. You're getting to know that wicked person, aren't you? Yeah, you're watching some sort of show, some sort of series, and know more about that than you know about the Word of God. You want to be planted in the house of the Lord? Yeah, you need to make sure you get those weeds away from you, don't you? Yeah, cut those weeds down, yeah. pluck them out, get them out of your life. Forward heart shall depart from me, I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbour, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. And those weeds need cutting down, and these are sort of classic traits of these types of people he says mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me he that walketh in a perfect way he shall serve me he that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight these are these are classic traits as i said yeah these are the sorts of things you see of these types of people now, he's talking clearly here about reprobates about the wicked I will early destroy all the wicked of the land. I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. And we need them out of our lives, don't we? Yeah. Okay, get them out of your lives. Get them out of your lives. Yeah. Go back to Psalm 92 and verse 7. When the wicked spring as the grass, uh, Psalm 92 and verse 7, when the wicked spring as the grass, when all the works of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. Okay, their end is coming, isn't it? Their end is coming. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. Yes, they're God's enemies, which makes them our enemies, yeah? yeah. Okay, which makes yeah. them our enemies too, but they're God's enemies first and foremost. Yeah. 
Okay, so to be successfully planted in the house of the Lord, number one, you need the right conditions. Number two, you need to remove the weeds. And look, seriously, I'm not just, oh, well, he's just coming out with some, you know, analogies for planting here. Look, it's for real. Look, people who just surround themselves with those sorts of people eventually will drop out of church. People that, that are in just, just bad churches, churches which become the poor conditions, the bad conditions, people won't end up being able to be planted in those churches. And number three, you need to, uh, you need to regularly water. Okay, you need to regularly water to be successfully planted in the house of the Lord. You, you can have the right conditions, can't you? You could dig out all of those weeds. You could get the perfect soil. You plant something in there. You get it all right. You've got the right amount of sun. You've got the right amount of shade. You've got the right amount of wind. And you don't water that plant, what's going to happen? It's going to die. Yeah, it's going to die. It's not going to survive. It's going it's, to, if you don't water it enough. It's going to be a weak and sickly plant, isn't it? You plant, you plant that tree, even if you just water it, you water it once at the beginning. Okay, great, I've given it a really good water. If you, look, that's not enough. Once a week, isn't it? Twice, three times a week, three to five, it's not enough, is it? It's not enough. You need watering. You know the sort of plant we are, the sort of tree we are? It has on the label, must water every day. Cannot have enough water drown it cannot be drowned yeah more and more and more water does our plant need yeah okay it needs a lot of sun as well it needs the face of the lord shining down but it needs water it needs water more than anything else it needs water what's our water the word of god the word of god and our like i said our label does say plenty of water now, it's not just that we need water. It's not just that we need, like, the, the ground being hosed with water. Do you know what we need as well? We need our whole body covered in it. We're that plant that needs soaking with water. It just needs to be sprayed. You get these plants like that, and you don't want to do it in full sun, by the way, okay? Because then they get scorched, yeah? But you need, to, you need to spray that plant with water. That's the sort of plant that we are. Um, you have to turn Ephesians 5.26, talks about Christ loving the church, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By the word it's the word of god isn't it it's the word of god turn to revelation 22 because the word of god isn't just any old water is it and we can't just have any old water and do you know there are gardeners there that are really fussy about the water they use you know that they won't just they won't just spray it straight out of tap they find they don't want the chlorine they don't want the other things in the tap water there are there are gardeners out there that will actually use a little thermostat a uh, little thermal uh, like an aquarium heater to get the the water temperature just right for their plants and do you know what water they like the most stuff that comes from up there it's rainwater, isn't it the stuff that comes from god yeah they want the real water they want the pure water not man's version of the water Revelation 22 and verse 1 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. I'll tell you what, on a hot day like that, that sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> clear as crystal, pure water. That's the pure water. But for it to be pure, I heard our pastor talk about this once. I think I actually saw him do an analogy of this. He had a glass of water and he said, like this, he had like this really pure, lovely water. And he just put a drop of, of mud in it just a drop and what happened to that glass brown yeah would you drink it just a drop just a tiny little crumb of mud in there and the whole thing went brown you wouldn't touch it would you and that's the same with the word of god isn't it yeah the same with the word of god when you when you when you want that pure water it can't even have one bit of corruption in it because one bit of corruption corrupts a whole lot doesn't it just Again, you don't have to turn there. First Peter 1.23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That's why it's so important that we have every word of God, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's so important that we have the King James Bible, because if yeah. you're going to be watered by the, by the pure, the pure water, crystal clear water, well, it has to be pure, doesn't it? If you're going to live by every word of God, it has to be pure. If there was one bit of corruption in there, it's going to corrupt the whole lot, isn't it? Yeah. And that's why we know that every word of God is, is pure, isn't it? Amen. Yeah, it's a, it's a buckler to us. It's a shield Amen. to us. It's absolutely everything we need. We have it in this word of God. And there's not one error in this word of God, is there? Now turn it back to Psalm 92. Because that regular watering then revives our spirit. 
So we water with the pure water. And then our spirit, the Holy Spirit, there, it likes that pure water. Verse 10, where you are in Psalm 92 says, But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Now, the anointing with oil is a picture of being filled with the Spirit. Yeah? Now, just for a second here, in case anyone raised an eyebrow there, what's this about unicorn said? Yeah, is the Word of God talking about those little pink and white and things flying around? Yeah. And, is that what it means? Oh, it's got unicorns in there. Oh, look, you know, I want to laugh. You know, yeah. Anyone heard these sort of attacks on it about the unicorns? Yeah, the God haters like this one. You know, oh, the King James Bible talks about unicorns. Like somehow the writers of the Bible were talking about these like flying, po are they ponies? Type thing, ponies with one horn. We got some, of the, some of the ladies there. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. So they're ponies, ponies with with a, with a single horn. Is that what what the word of God's talking about, though? No. Turn to uh, Job. Turn to Job thirty-nine. So a unicorn is an animal, I believe, with one horn, like a unicycle. Now some people argue this, but. Numbers 23, 22, I'm going to read, well, you turn to Job 39, which reads, God brought them out of Egypt. He had, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Does it sound like one of those little My Little Pony types, does it? The strength of a unicorn. Are they known for being strong? They're not known for being strong. So what are we talking about here? Well, look at Job 39, where we see the same thing. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? This is Job 39 and from verse 9. And then we're into verse 10. Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow? Or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Wilt thou trust him because his strength is great? Or wilt thou leave thy labour to him? Definitely rules out the pink flying ponies, doesn't it? His strength is great. Well... I believe that's the rhinoceros, okay? That's what I believe. Some people debate this. Some say it's a certain type of oxen or something else, but basically it's a strong animal, yeah? It's a strong animal. I believe with one horn, I believe it's a rhinoceros. And look, just because it was called something different, it doesn't mean that they must have therefore been talking about something which has been created more recently, mythical flying creatures. Uh, that's not what it's talking about here. I think the rhino. So back in Psalm 92, and that's just a quick kind of advertising break there, for unicorns. Back in Psalm 92, the psalmist is talking about being lifted up in strength and honour, being anointed with the Spirit. Uh, and for that, you need regular watering with the Word of God, don't you? If you're going to be lifted up, you're going to have the Spirit come upon you. If you're going to be filled with the Spirit, you need some regular watering, don't you? Yeah, you need the regular watering with the pure water of the Word. And, and look, that does include at church too, yeah? Yeah. You have to turn there. Psalm 134 and verse 1 says, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Because like I've said before, you need to be reading your Bibles, okay? Yeah. If anyone's come here today and they haven't read their Bible, you're already out of God's will, I believe. I believe start your day with it, yeah? Look up to God, yeah? yeah? And, and, and you should be praying to God in the morning, you should be reading your Bibles in the morning, okay? And I'm not going to do a show of hands because I don't want you all to have to lie. But I bet there's probably quite a lot of people here that have read the Bibles this morning you should be reading your Bibles okay you should be reading your Bibles daily okay there has to be a daily Bible reading plan because if there isn't you're missing out on so much of what God's got to say to you and then what are you listening to instead what are you reading instead but but again on top of reading the Bible you need to hear the Bible preached to you yeah. okay you need to hear the Bible preached you need to hear things preached and expounded and and dwelt upon that maybe you wouldn't have done when you were skim reading maybe your flesh wouldn't have dwelt on that verse while you, were, while you were reading through the Bible in the morning. Yeah. Maybe your mind was wandering on that verse which would have really hit you because you were too busy thinking about something else. Okay, but when you're here and the pulpit's getting thumped and, and the words are getting louder, sometimes you can't hide from it, can you? Sometimes you can. Some people maybe do block their ears. Some people maybe do wander off or think about other things. But now and again, I give it a little whack, you know, and hopefully you wake people up. I saw a few jumps there. And you can hear the word. You need to read the word of God. You need to hear the word of God. Okay, everyone here needs to hear the word of God being preached. But doesn't that mean you should be here as much as you can? You should be in church as much as you possibly can to hear the Word of God preach. There's a big difference between hearing the Word of God live with a preacher who 
Hopefully the word that God's putting something on their heart to preach that might really make a difference to you and, and tuning in on YouTube to something. Okay, there's a big difference as you all know. Okay, it's a big difference. So, yeah, we need to, we need to be regularly watered. That includes in church. So when you're successfully planted, number one, you have the right conditions. Number two, you've removed the weeds. Number three, you've regularly watered, okay? You're going to be successfully planted here. Now look at verse 11 in Psalm 92. Verse 11 says, Mine eye also shall see my desire of mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Who are the righteous? Verse 13, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You know, it doesn't matter how many old ladies you help, how many soup kitchens you volunteer at, yeah? how, many, how many kind, loving words you say to people. If you're not in the house of God, I don't think God looks down and sees you as righteous. Uh, unfortunately, obviously, your 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 Christ righteousness is imputed unto you. Yeah, spiritually you are. But I think when he looks at your day to day life, if you don't go to church, if you're not turning up at church, if you're not trying to find a way of turning up at church, yeah. if you're not not like we spoke about the other week, if you're in a place where there is no church, you're not trying to t- tooth and nail to get a church, get a way of getting a church in that country you're in then I don't think you're, you're right with God, and I don't think you're righteous. He said here, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, shall grow like a seed of Lebanon, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. That's the same person, isn't it? And it's not, and I don't think, if you're just turning up at church, and you're just disconnected, you're just a problem, you just don't even want to be here, you're just here because you just want to find fault or something else, you're not planted, you're not righteous. Yeah, yeah the righteous are planted in the house of the Lord planted, secure, roots are growing, you're, you're getting watered, you're, you're, you're getting rid of the weeds, you're regularly getting weeds out of your life, yeah, they're the righteous, okay, you need to be like that, you want to be planted, doesn't matter what else you do, that's the main thing, it, it all comes from the, from the house of God, and look, I've thought about this a lot, and you know, it, it dawned on me more and more, the more I read, uh, when we study 1 Corinthians, and, and, you know, just going through that book and just seeing how everything basically starts and finishes with the house of God in a Christian's life, doesn't it? And look, we, you know, it was hard before. It was hard with, like I've said many times, with the lack of, you know, decent churches around. But we have a church and, you know, we've got a church. We've got no excuses. It all starts and finishes with the church, doesn't it? It's all about the church. All like, all these letters, he's talking to churches, people in churches. He's not going, oh, to you who doesn't really fancy going to church. Uh, oh, you know, the, the letter to the church of the, sorry, the letter to the non-church goers of Ephesus, because it's a bit of a long drive. The letter to the, lo- to the non-church goers of wherever, because, you know, it, it, it would mean maybe changing your life a little bit and actually moving to somewhere where there's a church. Look, and again, I know it's not easy, it's not easy to hear that for people, but if, you, if you've literally moved away from church, or you've literally decided, yeah, well, you know, I don't really, my job's a bit more important than something else, look, find a way of being in church. Yeah. And, and if it's not our church, go to another church. But be in a church. And, and look, again, I'm not saying we're the only one. If you can find a church that you think, actually, no, look, I don't want to move to, I don't want to be near Wickford, Brother Ian. I don't even like Essex. Yeah, I, I, I thought the only way isn't Essex, yeah? Okay, fine. Go somewhere, though. Go to a church, please. Please find a church, though, that you can, and, and not just that you can turn up at, that you can be planted in. A church that you can just support. A church that you're going to sit there and just want the best for that church. A church that you're going to pray for. A church that you just want to be a big part of a church that you just want to be planted in. Because if it's not here, you need to find somewhere because that's God's will for your life. Yeah, yeah? That, that's, that's what God wants. That's what it's all about. That's all, all the letters of the New Testament are all about church members in churches. And otherwise you're missing out on so much of that life for the Lord. He says here in verse 14, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. And obviously there, it's a good thing being fat and flourishing. Mark 4.20 says, 
And, the, and you don't have to turn it, but Mark 4.20 says, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And that's the whole point, isn't it? That's the whole point. And like I've said many times before, those that are out of church, it's not long before the soul winning stops. It's not long before it dwindles. It's not long before it peters out. And it will be the odd time now and again. And because really the whole point of it is being in a church, serving the Lord, getting people saved, making disciples, getting people baptised and growing his army. And if we're not, he we're not here doing it, well, you're not, part, you're not part of the team, are you? So being planted in the house of God, we, we, look guys, we, we've, got, we've got a church. We've got a place that we consider to be now a permanent area where uh, if we outgrow this, like I said before, we could get a mezzanine up here in the future. We could get a lot of people in here, by the way, but even if, if, uh, if we got to that point and this whole estate is owned by the same landlord, as long as we don't upset them too much, then hopefully they're they will just give us a bigger unit in the future. They told me they have a, a new one come up a couple of times a year, 5,000 square feet, 6,000 square feet. But if we grow, we're all right. We don't, it doesn't look like we're just gonna have to move. I think the change of use would be easy if we're on the same estate as well. I don't think that would be an issue. We'd literally just take it with us. So it looks like we're in Wickford. And Wickford, I didn't even know where Wickford was a year ago. <laughs> if I, if I didn't even know where Wickford was probably six months ago. Even though we were coming to South End and driving part, I just saw a signpost say Wickford and I don't think I even took it in. But um, this is where God wants us. Let's get planted here, yeah? Let everyone here, let's be planted yeah. in the house of God. And then what happens then? The glory goes to God. Verse 15 says, To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him and that's what happens you're bringing forth fruit in old age even when you're planted in the house of God you're going to be here till the end do you sometimes wonder that because we're quite a young group here aren't we you think like where are you going to be in in 40 50 years time some of you I hope you're just going to be in the church in the church of God still bringing forth fruit still getting people saved still soul winning still serving the Lord just being that good and faithful servant yeah and that's where we all want to be but you need to get planted if you want that to happen yeah because the the, the trees that live the longest are the ones with the healthiest roots aren't they yeah yeah and that's that's the whole point and then what happens with that the glory goes to god to show that the lord is upright he is my rock and there's no unrighteousness in him because really it all comes from god doesn't it this church has come from god everyone here it's all come of god and this building's come of god and it's all glory to him isn't it on that let's pray Father, I thank you for this building. I thank you for, this, for, for these great people here. I thank you for all the help we've had, all the support, all the prayers, everything that's, that's culminated in us now having what seems to be a permanent building now in, you know, for, for a long time at least in, 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 in Wickford, Essex. And um, I, I pray that you just help us to, to be a shining light from here, that you help us to go out and preach the light of the gospel out to, to you know those surrounding us starting this afternoon down in down in Basildon and just just all the areas that we just preach the gospel just preach the word preach the truth um, help us to to all want to be planted here to be that you know that planted healthy tree in in the house of the lord and lord we we pray that you bless our day bless our afternoon bless our food uh we, we pray that you just bless it we thank you for that as it comes as well and in jesus name we pray all of this amen, amen.